Hey guys, welcome to another video by R&D Garage. I want to extend a warm welcome to my new subscribers. Thank you so much for liking and subscribing to my videos. Well, today we're working on my favorite truck. Uh, she's a 1969 Ford F-250 Camper Special that I inherited from my grandpa. And we're super excited because we're going to the Peggy Sue Car Show this Saturday, the 8th, I believe it is. Anyway, before we do that, we have to replace the, the brake booster and the master cylinder. As you can see, it's super wet, super gunky. Um, this isn't good because this destroys the bellows in the brake booster. So let's get started. Hey guys, please note that these steps may not be complete and any brake work should only be performed by a professional mechanic. This video is provided for entertainment use only. So before we start, we wanna make sure that the new parts match the old parts. And this looks like it matches up with the other brake booster perfectly. I've already checked out that the master cylinder matches, so we are good to go. Before we take apart the brake booster, I wanted to mention a couple things. Um, number one, you always wanna lay a whole bunch of towels out when you're dealing with brake fluid. It is extremely hazardous to paint. If you noticed you're getting some drops on the rags, stop what you're doing, put those aside, put fresh ones out. Um, once you get it on your gloves, go ahead, take those off, reach for a fresh pair or wash them off. Um, I've laid my tools out, as you can see down here, and we are ready. Oh, actually one more thing. So before you start taking apart the nuts itself, um, you're gonna wanna drain the brake fluid using a turkey baster or a mighty vac. I think we're ready to begin. So I had a thought before we begin. My Ford shirt was in the wash, and so I decided to wear a Honda shirt. Is that sacrilegious? Eh. Okay, let's get started. So what we're gonna do here is loosen both these nuts, one and two, and cap the oil lines. And once these are broken, they're pretty easy to come off. There we go. Okay. Oop, and as you can see, that one is dripping a little bit. So let's go ahead and cap it off. and we're gonna take a black cap and do the line as well. And you're gonna to have to push this back to actually get the cap on it. Perfect. And now is the time not to touch anything. So, or the paint. Now let's take care of this guy. side isn't weeping, which is good, but we're going to cap it off anyway. Okay. Oops, that was close. Okay, and again, push this back and cap. Come on, cap. There we go. Okay, I'm going to change rags, wash my hands, and I'll show you what comes next. Two more nuts and we're ready to pull off the master cylinder. I'm gonna go ahead and use my impact wrench for this. So the two nuts are on each side, one here and one right there. The washer as well. <laughs> Hasn't been off the truck in uh, since 69. <laughs> there we go, perfect. Put those two together and now we'll tackle this one. So 
sounded ugly, but we got it. So let's go ahead and get this washer off. Perfect. I'm going to set this aside. So it's important when taking off the master, master cylinder that you have a rag right under it because again, we don't want that fluid going everywhere. I'm going to set this aside and we'll be right back. So now we're going to take off the bolt that connects the power booster to the pedal. And it's located right here. And it's good to have this wrench here for leverage while you use the socket to take it off. Oops. Getting a little wild with my tools. that out and you'll notice it just kind of hangs loose now perfect so as you can see and as we suspected the master cylinder actually did leak quite a bit back through the brake booster you can see in the middle here down the front so it's a good thing that we decided to change out both so before we actually pull the brake booster we're going to go ahead and pull out the hose now you can see we actually pulled it off through the vacuum seal here do not do this on a brand new um, brake booster because you'll void the warranty. This one, it doesn't matter. We're going to rebuild it anyway. Um, normally, we would actually, you know, loosen the clip, slide it down and take off the hose. But, you know, the truck is very, very old and it was extremely hard to get that off. Okay, so this has been pulled off. We're good. Now we're going to go ahead and tackle the four bolts in the back. So these you're going to have fun with. <laughs> Unfortunately, I have little T-Rex arms, so it's not going to be that much fun for me. But the four bolts are on the back, two top and two on the bottom. Let's get it done. We're going to take a break and I'll show you how to pull off that brake booster. So now that the nuts are finger tight, I'm going to go ahead and loosen them, take them off and go ahead and pull out the brake booster. Um, I already had my cameraman pull that bottom one because, you know, my arms just couldn't reach. <laughs>
connection. Ah. Oh, fell through. That's a good sound. Okay. Now we're ready to remove the brake booster. To get it loose, I had to knock at it a couple times with the recoilless, but now she's free to go. Perfect. Oh, a lot of grossness coming out of there. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to put this aside and we shall continue. Cool. Okay. Now that the brake booster is out, there's a lot more room to play with. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this vacuum fitting right here. We're going to be reusing the line. We are not going to be reusing the fitting. And it should pop right out. <laughs> there we go. Perfect. Okay, we're gonna clean things up in here, and when we come back, I'll show you what's next. Hey guys, so we took a bit of a break because we had to paint our new brake booster. It comes unfinished, and it's always a good idea to paint it because that helps prevent rust. Now we're gonna go ahead and take a few measurements. You never wanna go off the old, plen the old plunger on the old brake booster because it may not fit in the new master cylinder. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and measure from the new master cylinder. So the first thing we're gonna do is measure the boss length, which is this piece right here. And that is, go like this. So it goes like that. And then we measure the inside, which, so, so something like that. And then we go over and measure the tip of the, the shaft to the tip of the acorn. And so we basically like that. And so the measurements we came up for for this was the boss thickness was 0.6. We have the total hole depth was 1.475. And what you're gonna do with that is take the total minus the boss, and for us, that's 0.875. And so basically, you want to make sure the plunger is about 8.7, or sorry, 0.875 or a little bit below. And that's how we go ahead and measure. So we've got that done. We're going to move on to the next step. Just a quick addition to adjust the, the plunger length, all you have to do is hold on to the shaft right here. There's like a little burr, and then just twist the tip. If you want to, twist the tip a little bit further than need to, put a little bit of blue Loctite on it, and then set it, and that'll just, it'll keep it steady for you. Now we're ready to move the clevis over to the new booster. And to do this, you're gonna put one wrench on the shaft right here, just to hold it steady, and you're gonna break the nut loose with the other one. There we go. And now we should be able to get the, the oh yeah, it'll turn just like this. And you don't want to put the nut further than you have to because that way it won't be the correct length. There we go. So we'll go ahead and put it on here. And since I didn't move the nut at all, it should be in the correct position. Perfect. Okay, we're ready to move on. Ah, uh, the joys of being short. So I was unable to put on the brake booster myself after finding out I would have to lay in most of the engine bay. So my cameraman took pity on me and replaced it for me. So even he had a bit of a hard time with it. And so he ended up having to loosen a couple of the bolts on the firewall bracket. So we got that in, got the bolts back in, in secured, and we also replaced the vacuum light. So we are ready to move on to the next step. Okay. So first we adjusted the brake pedal by rotating the clevis. The second step is we tightened the bolt holding the clevis to the pedal. Finally, we locked the clevis nut against the booster shaft, making sure to not allow the booster shaft to rotate. Very important. 
So when you get a new master cylinder, it's always important to perform a bench bleeding. There are two ways you can do this. One is by getting the adapter kit, which runs the lines back into the master cylinder itself. The other way is just to get two plugs to plug the ports. Now we're ready to start the bleeding process. When you start it, it's always important to use fresh fluid from a sealed container and use the fluid that's appropriate for your vehicle. In our case, it's Prestone Dot 3. So you're gonna go ahead and fill up the two reservoirs about halfway. What we're going to do now is use short, slow strokes to press the master cylinder plunger. While doing this, you will see fluid come through the black tubes and also see bubbles rising from the holes in the bottom of the master cylinder. Continue this process until you don't see bubbles anymore. Then remove the bleeder kit, reinstall the cap, and cap the ports before installing it in your vehicle. Now we're ready to put the master cylinder back into place. So this is pretty straightforward. It'll go back on the way it came off. You just don't try not to bang everything around. There we go. Perfect. Put, remember to put your washers on. There's one. And a two. And your nuts. You know what? I'm going to take off my gloves for this one because the last thing I want is to have them drop into the engine bay. one first. <laughs> they're new nuts, so they're a little, there we go. Hard to get on it first. Okay, this guy. There we go. Okay. Now we'll go ahead and ratchet them. Okay, now we're ready to put the oil lines back into the ports. Now we're ready to reattach the lines to the master cylinder. We're gonna do this by taking off the ports and reattaching them as quick as possible because this is gonna be messy. We also have about three layers of rags down there to catch most of the brake fluid. So let's get this done. So our camera battery died in the middle of that last take. So we're just gonna pretend nothing happened and we're smooth sailing. So I'm still tightening down this nut. Oh, 
and that is pretty tight. Move on to the next one. Cool, and that's tight. Whew, it's connected, moving on. So now we're gonna take a bit of brake cleaner and clean around the fittings and wherever else the brake fluid may have spilled. We're gonna do this and pay particular attention to the nuts because once we bleed the brakes, we'll be able to tell if there's been leaks. Let's go bleed those brakes. So the first step of bleeding the brakes is to fill the two reservoirs with fresh brake fluid. Now there's a small trick. When you open up the cap of your brand new bottle, just go ahead and poke a hole in the foil. Don't rip it all off. This way it'll pour out slowly and easily rather than get all over the place and splash. So like I said, we already filled that up. We're ready for the next step. So I'm gonna talk you guys through the bleeding process, but I'm not actually gonna be filming it because this is a two person job. One will be underneath and another one will be in the cap. So that's kind of hard to film. So anyway, here are the steps as follows. This process, like I said, will take two people. One person will bleed the calipers or wheel cylinders and the other will be inside pressing the brake pedal. For this vehicle, the bleeding order will start with the wheel furthest from the master cylinder and end with the wheel closest to it. Start with the right rear and then left rear, then right front, and finally left front. The person bleeding will put a box wrench onto the bleeder screw and connect to a short piece of hose to the bleeder screw with the other end in a plastic bottle. The person inside the truck will press and release the brake pedal two to three times, holding it down on the last stroke. The person bleeding will open the bleeder screw and allow brake fluid and trapped air to escape and then reclose the screw. It is important to not bottom out the pedal or allow the pedal to lift during bleeding. Frequently check the fluid level in the master while bleeding to ensure it does not run dry. Continue bleeding all wheels until fresh fluid comes out of the bleeder without, with no signs of air bubbles. The pedal should feel firm and not spongy. Once you have completed bleeding, be sure to clean any spilled fluid and refill both wells of the master cylinder. Carefully test drive the car in a parking lot or empty street to at low speeds to ensure good pedal feel and ensure the braking performance, acceptable braking performance. So we've completed all these steps. The brakes are working great. There's no spills, no leaks. We are good to go for the car show on Saturday. As always, thank you so much for liking, subscribing to my videos. It means a lot to me to see your comments. Um, I'm just having a lot of fun doing this and I'm so glad you guys are enjoying the videos too. As always, again, thank you for liking and subscribing to R&D Garage.